I've talked uh, several times now about the idea that uh, when you're looking at research, very often what you see is that uh, we're studying variables and the relationships between variables. So I want to talk more about relationships. In particular, I want to talk about, about this idea of a what's called a correlation. And this is something that will is important for uh, for many reasons, but I want to bring it up now at this point in the class because it is very relevant to um, to measurements and measurement validity. So as we're trying to demonstrate that our measurements are, are valid measurements of the constructs, so that they're measuring what we want them to measure, uh, what you should notice after going through a number of these different types of validity is that a common underlying trend is we're we're trying to show a measurement is valid by showing that the scores on that measurement are related to something else that there's a relationship between the measurement we're trying to validate and something else that that measurement should be related to something that measurement can predict in the future or something that it is related to right now a concurrent uh, measurement that we're taking, there should be in some way something that it is related to. Uh, that is that is a good way of showing, uh, hel helping to show that it is a valid measurement. So the idea though behind a correlation, well let's talk about the name, co, uh, co means together, together. Relation means there is a connection. In other words, a correlation is where there's two things that are connected, they're connected together. Uh, you'll also sometimes see this called a correlational, correlational relationship, which means that uh, there are, there is, there is a, uh, a state of being connected in which uh, two things are connected together, which is, uh, you know, saying correlational relationship is sort of like the redundant redundancy of redundant shipness, which is not a word. But, uh, but you will see this term used. Correlation, correlational relationship. It means two things are connected together. Specifically, what we're saying is this is a relationship. A relationship... Uh, where where two things, two variables, two constructs, two things change together. They change together. Another word for this that we I believe we've said uh, previously, this is co-varying. These things co-vary. This is exactly what co-vary means. It means changing together. And again, there we see that, that co means together. So it's a relationship where two things change together in a consistent, a consistent way. So what we mean by a consistent way is that if we have two different variables, let's say we have variables x and y, uh, as as x changes, right, y also changes. And these changes are in the same amount. So if, uh, if one variable increases by 1, then the other also increases by 1, or as 1 increases by 1, the other one increases by 2. Whatever that, you know, the, the amount that one is increasing relative to the other or varying or changing relative to the other could be could be different, but when we find a relationship, the amount of that change is consistent. I feel like the way I said that is confusing, so let's take a look at an example. We'll use the example we used when we were talking about concurrent validity, where we said we're, we have our new intelligence test our new intelligence test. And in, in that video, I think I called it the new, I said I referred to the NIT test, which is redundant because that would be new intelligence test test. Uh, but it's like when people say ATM machine, it's an automatic teller machine machine. Okay, so we're going to compare the NIT to the IQ test to see if there is consistency between those two measures. 
Is there a correlation? Is there a relationship where the IQ test and the NIT co-vary or change together in a consistent way? What that would mean, like we saw before, is that as someone gets a higher score on IQ, they also get a higher score on the NIT. Um, what you can see here is that if we said, I think we said this is 150 and this is 15, this is zero. Uh, if we uh, jump from a score of, you know, if someone gets a score of zero on the IQ test all the way down here at the bottom, they should get a score of zero on the, on the NIT, right? If we go to someone who has an increased IQ of 150, right, then they should also have an increased NIT of 15. In other words, as IQ increases by that amount, by 150, the NIT all increases by 15. We could simplify this and say if IQ goes up by 10, NIT goes up by 1. In other words, NIT and IQ both vary from, you know, from person to person. Uh, and they vary together, and they vary in a consistent way, so that when we plot them, we get something like this. And I, I'm making that too consistent. Really, it shouldn't be perfect, but we should see something relatively consistent like that, and that approximates a straight line. That's not a very straight line, but just imagine, imagine, use your imagination here. This is a straight line. And, of course, uh, for different relationships... It could be that as the one variable increases, I'll use a different color to show this, as the one variable increases, the other variable in also increases, but maybe it doesn't do so as quickly. And in that case, uh, we may see lines that have different levels of steepness or slope, right? All of these lines are showing correlations because there's a consistent relationship. Uh, if there wasn't a consistent relationship, then trying to draw a line through it, I'm going to make a very silly picture here, trying to draw a line through it, we would have to do a line like this because it's not consistent. The point is that when one changes, the other should change in the same way each time it changes. Every time we have a change in IQ of 10 points, we should have a change in NIT of 1. That shows a very consistent relationship or what we would call a strong correlation.